Next one is the working principle of the DC motor. So as just now previously we discussed, you are having the permanent magnets or it may be electromagnet. So you are having the magnetic field that is going from north to south in this direction. Then you are having two conductors here. This is conductor one and this will consider this as the conductor number two. But in these two, it is almost parallel to it or in the opposite direction. So there will not be much of a force created in these conductors. The maximum force is created only along the length of that particular coil. Now you can see here, this is the direction of the current. So the current is going from the positive side, it is going, it is coming back and it is reaching the uh, negative side here. So now if the current is going in this direction here, the magnetic field is from north to south. So you are going to get the force in the downward direction. Now you can see here, the current is flowing like this and the magnetic field is here. So between this conductor and the other conductor, if you are seeing, there is a change in direction of the current. So in this here, it is going in this direction. There it is coming in the other direction. So because of the change in direction of the current, force also will change in direction. So here it is coming downwards. There it is going upwards. So this particular conductor is going to rotate in the clockwise direction. It will rotate in the clockwise direction. So if you are changing the terminals here, if you are changing the terminals, it will rotate in the counterclockwise direction. So if you want to change the direction, all you have to do is you have to rotate the polarity of these particular contacts. The current flow will change in direction. It will immediately rotate in the opposite direction. So this is the basic principle of a DC motor. Now why you require these brushes? Why you require this particular brushes? So now this brush is connected to the positive side and this brush is connected to the negative side. Now this particular conductor is connected to the negative side. So the force is acting in this direction. Now when this conductor comes over here, when this particular conductor rotates and comes over here, if the direction of the current is not changed, if the direction of the current is not changed, what will happen? When this conductor comes here, the current will continue to remain in the same direction. The current will continue to remain in the same direction. So you will be having the torque generated in the opposite direction like this. So your motor will not have rotation motion. It will have reciprocating motion. So it will rotate some like this. Then immediately it will rotate in the opposite direction. So it will rotate like that and like that continuously. If you are having several conductors, then it will simply stall. It will not have any effective rotation. It will simply remaining idle. So when the conductors are rotating, you want to ensure that whenever any coil or a conductor comes towards the north pole, it will have current only in this direction. And whenever a conductor comes towards the south pole, it should have current flowing through it only in this direction. Then these two forces will always remain in this particular point, causing the rotor to have a continuous rotation. If you are not using this, then it is not possible to change the direction of current flow. So it is not possible to supply the current, so the rotor cannot rotate. So that is the reason why we are using a brushes and we are using a commutator. You cannot make it a fixed joint because this commutator also rotates along with this particular coils. So you cannot make it a fixed joint. So you are using a spring loaded brushes so that they are always resting on this commutator and supplying the required amount of power or current into the coils so that the motor will have a continuous rotation. This is a basic working principle of the DC motor. This is applicable for all the different types of DC motors we are having. Now you can have a permanent magnet or you can have a electromagnet. Electromagnet means you will have a coil surrounding the core. Because of the current flowing in the coil, you will be having the core which is magnetized. So you will be having the magnetic field. You will be having the magnetic field direction and you will be having the torque. Now in the figure shows only one set of magnets and one set of conductors. But in actual practice, it will be something like this. So you are having several magnets here. There are two pairs of electromagnets and you are having several conductors which are continuously entering into the uh, regions here. So thereby you will be having more uniform torque generated. So it is possible to have very smooth rotation in case of the DC motors. So another thing we have to remember is there is something called as a back EMF. That, uh, that is the principle important to remember in the motor. Now what is this back EMF? There is one more law uh, which tells that whenever there is a change in magnetic flux over a particular conductor an EMF is generated, that EMF will ensure that a current is flowing. Now the direction of this current and the back EMF will try to oppose the movement of the flux itself. 
it will try to oppose the movement of the flux now what is this flux so from north to south you are having the magnetic flux here from north to south you are having the magnetic flux and you are having the conductor which is carrying the current now when the force is generated here when the force is generated this conductor will try to move so in the magnetic field you are having a conductor which is moving or with respect to the conductor there is a movement of the magnetic field so because of this motion there will be a emf that is called as the back emf which is generated in this particular conductor which is trying to oppose which is trying to oppose the initial current so you will be having something called as a back emf so what is the factors governing this back emf so this back emf is mainly dependent on the speed of the relative motion between the flux and the conductor so at higher speed you will be having more back emf at lower speed you will be having very less uh, back emf now in a dc motor when you are suddenly applying lot of load or you are trying to apply lot of acceleration something like that, or you are trying to climb a steep hill in case of the vehicle if you are considering there is increased load on the electric motor so in that case what happens is suddenly the speed is going to reduce now when the speed is reducing so back emf in the coils is also reduced so because of which more current can pass through the particular conductors so when more current passes the force generated is going to increase so automatically the speed is again going to recover and it will be maintained at a constant value so we can in this way the speed whatever you want it will be maintained at a constant value even though you are applying more load or you are trying to apply the less load because of this back emf it is always trying to balance out and the required speed is going to be maintained if you want to change the speed from one level to another level usually we can do is either we can change the voltage thereby we are limiting the maximum speed or we can control the current thereby we are reducing the power available so the speed of rotation is also going to reduce so these are the uh, another important concept we have to remember so whenever we talk about the motors we have to always talk about the back emf which is generated so what are the different types of dc motor so the first type is the permanent magnet dc motor the field is given by the magnet then you are having the rotor in the rotor you are having the different coils you are supplying the current to the various coils because of this particular current flowing and the magnetic field you will be having the force generated because of which the rotor will start to rotate now what is the advantage of this one the advantage is if you are having a simple mechanism by which you are able to rotate this one rotate the inverse the polarity the motor will rotate in the reverse direction so among all the dc motors permanent magnet dc motors are very easy to reverse and these are some of the characteristics of this particular motor so as you can see if you are increasing the armature current torque also is going to increase so this is the armature torque that is the torque available at the coil and this is the torque that is available at the shaft so when you come to the shaft you will be having lot of frictional losses will be there and other losses will be there so because of which the torque actual torque at the shaft will be slightly lesser at any current you are taking take the current here you draw a vertical line this is the torque available this is actually the torque that should be generated so if you are increasing the current more and more force is generated lorentz force because of which you are having higher and higher torque here whatever is the armature current is there it will be having the constant speed you can see here it will be having the constant speed speed is not going to change speed so if you are having more current so what is happening the speed will remain same but you are supplying more current means more power is you are supplying so torque is continuously going to increase but the speed is going to remain same if you are comparing torque and speed if you are comparing torque and speed it will be in this particular fashion because when the torque increases the speed has to reduce to make sure that the power rating should be the constant otherwise you are supplying more power apart from that there will be losses and other things because of which you will be having this particular effect if you are drawing in another car it will be a parabola it will be actual come like a parabola at some intermediate value you are going to get the maximum uh, power if you are measuring the power you will have the maximum power between the characteristics you will have the power and speed sorry power and speed or power and torque you will be having a parabola at some point you will be having the maximum at that maximum will be the ideal operating speed where you have the much higher efficiency at all other speeds and torque the efficiency will be slightly reduced this is the permanent magnet dc motor uh, most widely used 
where you can have very good speed control it will operate at very constant speed irrespective of the load if you are increasing the load what it will do is it will try to draw more armature current and it will continue to maintain the speed so it will have very good speed characteristics it is possible to reverse it is possible to reverse the motor very easily that is about the permanent magnet dc motor next one is a series wound motor series wound motor means here we not have any permanent magnet whatever the stator is there that is also made up of electromagnet so that is a field coil field coil means coils by which you are trying to create the magnetic field that is a field coil you are having the armature that is a rotor coils so because of the interaction here you are having the uh, rotation now whatever current is flowing through the field that is also flowing through the armature here so if you are trying to reduce the current here both of them will be affected so armature coil also affected field coil also is affected because they are connected in series same current is flowing through this particular both the elements so what is the advantage and what is the disadvantage advantage is the initial torque that is the starting torque will be very very high means if you are switching on the motor even if you have connected a very heavy load it will continue to rotate straight away without any issues but some of the motors cannot generate very large starting torque maybe after it rotates for some amount of time it is able to generate the required amount of torque then only you can couple the particular uh, output or the load you can connect otherwise you should not connect it but in case of the series one motor instantaneously it can generate very large amount of torque but the disadvantage is if you are not connecting any load if you are not connecting any load and if you have switched on the motor the motor speed will be very very high sometimes it may so happen that the bearings and other things will simply heat up and they will fail that is a danger associated with the series wound motor now these are the different characteristics you are having the armature current and you are having the torque again it is increasing with the current then you are having armature current and the speed that is decreasing drastically here you are having torque and speed again it is in the decreasing fashion next one is the shunt wound motor now in the shunt wound motor the field coil that is a stator coils which is creating the magnetic field and the rotor coils that is the armature coil they are connected in parallel again here what because of the resistance of the field coil you will be having some amount of current always flowing through it and whatever the remaining current is there that will be flowing through the armature coil so because there will be less resistance here you are having lot of conductors more amount of current will be flowing here maybe less amount of current is flowing through the a field coil so you can have the advantages you can have some amount of good control over here between the current flowing through the field coil and the current flowing through the armature coil because they are connected in parallel whenever you are connecting in parallel the current flowing through this will be different but the voltage across the coil and the armature coil will be the same so the most of the times the torque and uh, speed are dependent on the armature current so by using some kind of control here it is possible to get a very good speed control in case of the shunt wound motor which may not be possible in case of the series wound motor because if you are putting any control the entire current flow in the circuit is going to change so if you are putting some kind of device here to control the current that same thing will be applicable to the armature coil also so it is not possible to control in the series wound motor but in case of the shunt wound motor you can have a separate control here so that you are limiting the current flow into the field coil whatever remaining current is there it will flow into the armature coil and it will go back so these are the characteristics shunt wound motor again as the armature current increases torque is also increasing if you are having the speed again armature current the speed will more or less remain constant then torque and speed characteristics as the torque increases then the speed is going to slightly reduce now where you can use this one now this shunt wound motor has got very good speed control capability we can incorporate the elements to control the current here thereby you can control the you know, speed of this particular one or you can control the torque very easily now the disadvantage is the starting torque is very very less which means you cannot connect it to a load straight away so you just have to switch on the motor it has to run for certain uh, time then only you can connect the external load for the movement whatever you are requiring next one is the compound wound motor the compound wound motor takes the advantages of both the series wound motor and the shunt wound motor here you are having two field coils 
one is connected in series other one is connected in parallel so this series one will give very high starting torque this field coil will give the required kind of speed control so it will combine the advantages of both the uh, series wound and the shunt wound motors what is the disadvantage you are having two separate field coils so it may be more costly as compared to the other one the last one is a separately excited uh, uh, dc motor so in this case whatever supply you are giving you are giving from two different sources so armature coil will be having supply from from one source field coil will be having supply from another source the main advantage is you can have very very good control here but the disadvantage is you require two separate power sources you have to control them individually so you have to control the field coil you have to control the armature coil depending on the torque and speed that is required so controlling will be more complex as compared to all the other motors that we have discussed so far in case of the dc motors so the characteristics of the separate wound dc motor will be more or less the characteristics of the shunt wound motor so those two characteristics will be very same so starting torque will be slightly lesser but you are having very good speed control 